to the channel. I am back in my daughter's bedroom today. If you have been following along and you caught my last video, you know that I have been in here working on a DIY custom closet build out for her reach in closet. I've really wanted to maximize storage space for her. And I did that with the help of an Ikea hack. So I actually ended up using two of the Tarva dressers as her drawers and then kind of built everything else out around that. My last video, I showed you the process of how I kind of pieced everything together for the build out. And now we are ready to move on to finishing it all out. It's ready to be primed and painted and hardware installed to get this space up and running for her. I did end up changing the design a little bit and added a little something extra from what you saw in my last video. So with these Tarva dressers, they did end up giving me a little bit of trouble in terms of the drawers. Obviously, we all know IKEA furniture is not the best quality. That's why it does make for great hacks and making it your own. But it was really bothering me because I ended up having some ununiform gaps in between the drawers and little things like that just draw my attention and I knew that if I didn't fix it that I would be bothered by it and I would regret it. So I actually ended up grabbing some quarter inch poplar board and I trimmed those drawers out in a shaker style. That way I could close my gap, make everything look a lot more seamless and flush. And then I took it one step further and I ended up getting some quarter inch dowel rods. And with the use of these really cool miter shears, I was able to cut those dowels at a 45 degree angle and fit them just with some wood glue in the corners. And I love this little bead detail that it created. I think it makes a really big impact when you pay attention to little details like that. In my opinion, it's really what makes DIY exciting because you can really customize things as much as you possibly want. So I'm just gonna get this space taped off and prepped ready for paint and we're going to get it primed. I do have a paint sprayer, but I decided I think I'm just going to use a roller and brushes for this. I know it's gonna take a little bit more time, but Spraying, obviously you have to deal with masking things off, making sure the spray isn't over spraying into the room and things like that. Let me show you what color we're gonna be painting this. which I'm going to be applying to all of the raw wood areas, my face frames and my baseboards are already pre-primed, so I don't really need to give those a coat, but definitely any areas where I have raw wood. Otherwise, if I apply the paint straight to it, the wood's just gonna soak it up. I'm gonna need more coats, and the primer just does a really good job of giving it a nice protective base coat before the other paint goes on. So that's pretty straightforward, but my paint that I ended up going with, I really went back and forth again on doing something a little bit more bold or just staying neutral, but this will coordinate really well with the wall color that we chose that you'll see next time. So I ended up going with this color Shoji White which is just a really nice creamy off-white. Um, it's not too warm, not too cool. I wanted something that was not going to have any real undertones to it. Just wanted something very neutral, very simple and clean. And I think it would just be a really nice offset to the wall color that we've chosen. But we'll get everything primed first and then we can go in with our paint. Change of plans. I was 
planning to start rolling all of this. However, I just realized that the little replacement rollers that I bought the other day, these guys, and my roller handle that I've had for ages are not the same brand. I thought they were pretty universal. Apparently they're not, and they don't fit. So I need to go back to the hardware store, but I also need to pick my kids up from the bus soon. So I don't have time to run there, come back and actually be productive. So in the meantime, I'm gonna start brushing some primer on these drawer fronts since that's better anyway for these little details. I kind of need a brush to get in some of those little areas. So we're gonna start here instead. And then as soon as I get what I need, we'll continue on with this. One, two, three, four. After the storm, I'm not a match simply waiting to burn. All I am is a friend, your friend to the end. Went to the hardware store today after making a good start on the dresser drawers, getting those primed up yesterday, and I think I got more than I need to start rolling all of this and getting this primed. I got spare rollers for one handle and I got a new handle for these rollers. So we should be good to go. I'm not your impression of a city wish. You loved more than everything you gave for it. And I'm not here to criticize the all I am is a friend, your friend till the end. All I am is a friend, your friend till the end. day in Virginia today. I decided to bring my drawer fronts outside because it was so beautiful today so that I can get the paint on them out here. Anytime the weather is like this, I would much prefer to be outside when I can. And it's just gonna help my paint to dry a little bit faster as well, which is a bonus. So after priming, the key to getting a nice smooth finish, especially if you're not spraying, like I've decided against this time, is nice, thin coats of paint, and then always doing a light sanding in between. This is going to just knock back any imperfections, make the surface really nice and smooth for your next coat of paint, and you're gonna get the best results. Even though it takes a little bit more time, sanding in between really does make a big difference. So I've actually already gone ahead and I have sanded all of these and just given them a quick wipe down and we're ready for our first coat of color. I'm gonna be using a combination of a little roller. This is one of the rollers that is specifically for cabinetry to get a nice smooth finish. So I'm gonna roll as much on as I can, and then I'll be going back in with a little brush just to make sure I have it in all the little nooks and crannies. I don't have any drips or anything like that and create a nice smooth finish. But I'm really excited to see the color on these now. You gonna pick up a brush and help? You're just on bird watching duty. a few of these done and they've been drying I thought why are they so flat why is the finish so flat and it's because it is 
<laughs> I definitely asked for satin finish in this paint. Check the tin. It's actually eggshell, which is not the end of the world. It's just for things like cabinetry, closets, anything like that that's more of like a high traffic area, it takes a little bit more of a beating. The satin or even semi-gloss finish is just more durable. It's easier to clean. Um, so I'm going to have to run back to the hardware store and see if I can return this. I don't even know if I can. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just finish off the paint I've already got in my tray. Just try to get at least one coat on the rest of these. Go see if I can return it, get some satin, and then that way I can do the rest of the coats on these and on the closet in satin. It's the next day. I came home with my satin paint yesterday, put another coat on those drawer fronts. It looks so much better. Just with that satin finish, I feel like it just looks so much more polished and I know it's gonna be more durable overall. They're looking so good and I am ready to just bust out the rest of this closet, get it done. I actually started painting these cubbies already, which trust me, you do not want to see me painting these. It is tricky getting in these small areas with the paintbrush and the roller, so I thought I'd spare you <laughs> that. And watching someone paint is kind of similar to watching paint dry. You only need to see so much of it. So I'm gonna start rolling this satin paint over the rest of it, hopefully getting the painting all knocked out today. And then there's really not much left to do, but I wanted to show you the hardware that I have for the dresser drawers. I got these really simple knobs from, I just ordered these from Amazon. And these are actually really, really good quality. Um, I was really impressed with them. They're solid brass and they're really heavy. So I think these are gonna look great. The drawers are still downstairs, but um, I think that is gonna look really, really nice when it's all finished. As far as the rods that I'm gonna be installing, I went back and forth with this. I found some brass rods that I really, really love and that would have looked really great with the knobs, but they seem to be sold out just about everywhere. And then places that I did find brass rods, they were ridiculously expensive. So I actually saved all of the old wooden rods that I pulled out from her closet and my son's closet when we ripped that out. So I have a lot of rods just sitting around that I can use. So I think I'm just going to sand and stain those old rods that I pulled out for now and install those. I am not a witness here to call you in for the things that you done or the thing that you did. And I'm not the shadow of anyone you've been. All I am is a friend. Another gorgeous day here in Virginia it is so bright I was like squinting so I needed to put my sunglasses on I have all of the painting in the closet completely finished I put all of the drawers back in and so my next step is to get the wooden railings that are gonna go in the closet all finished and this piece is big enough that I can cut this into three for all of my sections and get essentially three rods out of one, which is great. So I'm going to just run over this with some 220 grit sandpaper just to get off any imperfections, get it prepped for staining. I grabbed some of these just simple little end caps that the rods will fit in that I will mount to the insides of each section of the closet. And then I picked up some dark walnut stain. I think this will be a really nice rich color in there. So I'm gonna just run over this with my orbital sander quickly, get a coat of stain on, and then as this is drying, I can move on to putting the hardware on the drawers. And then I can come back and see if it needs another coat of stain or if one is good enough. So we've got this all sanded. I wiped it down with a damp cloth just to remove any of that dust from sanding. And I am going to just 
after my stain. You don't ever want to shake a can of stain. You just want to kind of gently stir it. So I just have a scrap piece of wood and I'm just gonna use this. And I like to apply stain typically with a cloth. Now the only thing I'm not sure of is that the wood tone of these little end caps and the wood tone of the rod are different. I'm pretty sure the rod is like a red oak. So I'll just have to see, but hopefully they don't take the stain completely different. Here we go. Okay, first coat is on and I don't think it's going to need a second coat. This is honestly darker than I thought it was going to be, darker than it looked on the samples, but obviously all woods take stain differently. It's really hard to know. Um, I'm anxious to see how these little pieces take it in just a minute, um, but I, I would prefer like a little bit more of a lighter, slightly warmer tone to it, but I'm gonna try not to be too picky. I have to remember that this is just a closet rod. It's going to be covered with hangers and clothes and you know, you're not even really going to see much of it in the closet. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit, move on, stain my little end caps. And while those are drying, we can go do the hardware. alone I knew right when I put that stain on that railing that it wasn't right I put it on and I would just like went silent and I was just like this in my head like this is gonna be fine it's gonna be fine it's just a closet I tried to live with it I put the hardware on I just stared at the rod in the space trying to like be okay with it and I just wasn't and like I said before those little things really are important to me and it just wasn't what I was going for so luckily we had another large wooden rod that I pulled out of my son's closet I gave that a light sanding and I restained this one with special walnut so just a lighter walnut. I don't, I still don't know why it turned out, that dark walnut turned out so dark. Anyway, I'm much happier with this. This is a lot more in line with what I was envisioning. Just a more kind of like warm brown, not super dark. Um, I wanna bring in this sort of warmth that matches the brass hardware on the knobs and things like that. So I'm gonna get this measured up and cut down to size on my miter saw and we can get it installed. extra effort to redo it. So this is the special walnut that I redid. I cut all of these a little bit bigger than I need just so I don't make them too short. I can always cut a little bit off. 
um, after my little end caps are installed. <laughs> my dog's ball rolling across the floor. But this wood tone is so much more in line with what I wanted. It's just warmer and I think it just goes so much better with the brass hardware versus the difference of this one that I stared at for ages. It's just so dark. Can you see the difference? In certain light, it almost has this kind of weird, almost sort of purpley undertone to it and I just don't like it. I mean, in a way and in the right space, it could be really pretty, but it's just not what I was going for in the closet. Okay, the only thing with these end caps compared to others I've seen that have three different holes for screws, this just has one right in the middle. So that's going to affect where I can actually hang these. I can make this side and that side in the exact same alignment, but obviously with only one screw hole, if they're all the exact same, the screws are going to hit each other <laughs> through the wood. So I'm just gonna have to offset this center section, which shouldn't be a big deal. Once I have these mounted, I'm gonna take new measurements from the inside, go make some slight adjustment cuts to my rods, and then they should just slot nicely into these. Okay, I'm trying to just get a visual here of where I want these to sit. I think somewhere pretty much in the middle is gonna allow plenty of space for the hangers and clothes. If I hang it, my only concern is <laughs> initially like my daughter's gonna have to like really reach to reach this. Um, but if I hang it up here, it'll allow plenty of space for clothes. And then I do have a few things I wanna put on this shelf as well. So it'll allow space for all of that. closet back together. I do have one other thing I need to install in here, which should be very, very easy. Lighting was tricky. So there are actually lights already installed inside the closet. And when we moved in, they were just those really terrible fluorescent kind of tube lights up inside there. And it just wasn't nice lighting for the closet. And I actually have a little plan for those lights when I move on to finishing off the rest of her room. But I do think that the closet does need some lighting. And I've seen really good reviews about the very simple LED rechargeable lights that you can get and install in closets under cabinetry that are motion censored. So I got some of those. Okay, let me show you these lights really quickly before we put them in. So it comes in a two pack, which is really nice. And it has this magnetic piece that just clips on the back, super strong. And these really strong stickies that you mount the magnet wherever you want to the surface. And then the light itself just sticks to it. And that way you can pull it down. It's completely rechargeable, which is amazing. So it has this little charging port. If it's out of battery, you just recharge it. You don't have to worry about replacing light bulbs and all that stuff. I just think it's a really great option, especially with the motion sensor for things like closets under cabinets. So it has different settings. You can either keep it on constantly, just the on setting, and it, you can choose different temperatures of your light. So 
I just went with a soft warm light. I think that's nice for closets and just my preference in general versus cooler lighting. And then it has the G setting, which is the automatic sensor setting. And what's nice about that is it's only going to turn on from motion in low light, which is really nice. So eventually when I get her doors back on, which I'm actually not gonna put back on yet, as much as I would love to see them on for the finish before and after and the sort of end closet reveal, as you know, I'm gonna be fully repainting her bedroom directly after this closet is finished. But I would have to take these closet doors off again to repaint them the new color. So I'm just gonna leave them off for now. But when they are back on, the great thing is that when it's nighttime, it's a little bit darker in here, when she opens those closet doors, these motion activated lights should just come on automatically and then shut off again when she closes them, which is great. So I'm gonna put these in and then I'm gonna start getting the rest of her stuff in here so she is a functional closet again. Let's meet down at the lonely lake Before summer has gone away Swim out under a broken sky Cold sun colored with shades of white Wave goodbye to last summer Cold air coming away soon Tell me something about yourself you She's got a lot more books I'm going to keep filling these shelves with. I have a feeling as she reaches her teenage years, the books will eventually get replaced with lots of pairs of shoes, but for now they make really, really cute bookshelves. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to part two of this video. If you loved the progress of this build out and want to see a lot more projects in the future, we have our entire house that we're going to be tackling space by space. Make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on because you're not going to want to miss when we tackle the rest of her bedroom. I'm gonna be revealing the paint color that we finally chose, walking you through the design plan, and I'm really excited to just get this space completely finished up for her. I think the warm weather is finally here to stay, so I'm also gonna be taking you outside for some of our outdoor spaces, and there's so much more to come after that. Thank you again for watching. Put any questions you might have in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and interacting with you in the comments section. And so appreciate all of your kind words and feedback and all of that. So don't be shy in the comments. And let's do one more quick recap before and after of this closet space. Bye guys. Seagulls flying overhead And owls down in the sand Little crabs walking over our legs And we were together just like lovers should have been Like the changing tide you have changed your mind And now you are no longer mine Last summer